Ever wonder what a bird's eye view really looks like? If you watched any of the episodes of this year's PBS nature series, Earthlight, you're starting to see the world the way geese, vultures, flamingos, and dozens of other bird species see it. Coming up on October 9th, the series will conclude with an astonishing episode that shows you not only how the filmmakers flew with the birds, but also how they taught the birds to be filmmakers themselves. We asked the series executive producer, Fred Kaufman, to take us behind the scenes. But first, here's a quick look at Earth Flight. And joining me now is Fred Kaufman, executive producer of Nature. Fred, welcome. Thank you. Now, Fred, I think the clip gave us a pretty good hint, but could you give us a quick summary of what this incredible series is about? It's sort of seeing the world through the bird's eyes, but, but I really see it as a very intimate and up-close look at, at birds and bird behavior in a way that's never been shown before. Talking about that, the last episode, the sixth and final episode that will air on October 9th, is about the making mm -hmm. uh, of this series, and it shows how these filmmakers got so close to the birds. Can you give us a preview? How did they do it? Well, you can't help but watch this series and think, how did they do that? You know, where's the camera and everything? So they used every trick in the book. Uh, just about anything that flies, they put a camera on, you know, micro gliders, uh, helicopters, drones. Uh, we even had a model vulture. We put small cameras, obviously, on birds. We harness them. But I think the most ambitious thing is we imprinted birds. What is that? Well, imprinting means the first, certain bird, it's not every bird, but with geese and ducks, the second they come out of their egg, the first thing they see, they bond with. They think that's their mother. And in nature, it usually is. And that's what sort of keeps these, these young chicks safe. But if it's a person, they actually bond to that person. And it's a technique we showed in a film we did called My Life as a Turkey. And, and as filmmakers, we've been using it. Uh, for this series, we imprinted some geese. And uh, because of that, they always stay right next to that person. So you could film these birds no more than a few feet away. And the person who were the cameramen who later on filmed them. Yes, we had a French cameraman named Christian who imprinted the birds and then went up in the air in a micro light with a cameraman and the birds are literally a few feet away. Now, the, the, the other side to that is, of course, when you're done filming, your job isn't over. You're with those birds 24-7. So Christian was hired for virtually a year um, to stay with these birds. If you're not there, these birds get very agitated. Mm -hmm. And so he had to train them, and he had to raise them. And so it's a huge commitment. But what happens after the, the film is over? I mean, do they stay as pets of the cameraman or do they go into the wild? Well, those particular birds, actually, the cameraman had a fairly large amount of, of land on, on the farm that he lives. And, and they come and go, but, you know, that's sort of their home. But after about nine months to a year, that, that bond sort of dissipates and, and the birds do mm -hmm. take off. Now, this is four years in the making, 40 countries, six continents. What was the most difficult part <laughs> of the series? Well, ironically, it wasn't so much the filming, but getting the permits to film where we did. Uh, because obviously you're going up with these, uh, you know, machines, you're, you're flying imprinted birds or trained birds. It can be quite dangerous. And so to fly over some cities, it, it was touch and go getting permission. We wanted to fly the birds past the Eiffel Tower, for example, but uh, Paris didn't allow it. We wanted to fly vultures over Machu Picchu, but we couldn't get permission. So some cities did come through for us, others didn't. And sort of, there's nothing you could really do. What makes it difficult is it's out of your control. Now, on the other hand, you said some cities allowed you. Edinburgh stopped air traffic so that you can film. Yeah, it's surprising what some cities will do and others won't, in the case with Edinburgh, but they had to take off six miles away from the city. Mm -hmm. 
do their loop around the city and come back. It was 12 miles of flying, which was a little tricky that the birds would stay up that long without wanting to descend and rest. So what was your favorite part of this whole series? Well, I find it all fascinating, yeah. but the, the, the one that I found particularly interesting because it's such a natural history spectacle, the Cape Gannets in South Africa dive bombing the sardine run. I mean, this is a very well-known natural history sequence. The sardines make a run down South Africa, and they, they're small fish, and they ball up under the water. And these gannets come down at 40 miles an hour. They don't slow down to enter the water. They can go 60 feet deep. They catch these little fish. They come back up. And we shot it from below water, on the water, and from the sky, and it's just complete mayhem. And it's just absolutely suspenseful and stunning. My favorite was the geese. They were flying past the Statue of Liberty and on their own. They decided to take a little tour of Brooklyn. They must have been hipster geese. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we show that scene. Those are imprinted geese, yeah. again, with our cameraman, Neil Reddig. And they're flying right next to the boat. And we're doing what we're doing. And then they just decide to, hey, let's, let's kind of explore. Fortunately, these birds are outfitted with little t telemetry and transistors. So if they do take off, we, we track them down. So could this series have been done 10 years ago? Did the technology exist? Well, the technology existed, but it's constantly getting better. So I think the series could have been done 10 years ago. It probably wouldn't have looked as good. But what I think is interesting and what I'm hoping for is where technology and science come together in the future where we actually see the world the way the animals see the world. So even though we're getting these extraordinary perspectives from the bird's eye view, we're still seeing the world the way we would see it. Animals, birds, they all perceive the world quite differently than we do. And I would like to see the day when we can really interpret exactly how they're seeing the planet. Fred, thank you so much.